<laughs> Excuse me, I think I may have had a frog in my throat. Don't mind anything I said there. It's... <laughs> Anyways, Happy Halloween. This season is by far one of my favorite for gaming. I love spooky themed everything in all of my games. And of course, Red Dead Redemption is no exception. Rockstar has blessed us with a DLC for Red Dead Redemption 1 that I never knew I wanted. That's right, we're talking about Undead Nightmare, a side story that sees what happens if we add a zombie plague to the world of Red Dead Redemption. So for this video, I figured let's take a trip down memory lane and talk about the aspects that make Undead Nightmare such a blast to play. So sit down, grab a bucket of popcorn, and enjoy the video. <laughs> The game starts us off sometime after John saves his family but before his eventual execution, in a separate sequence of events. In this timeline, John returns home to his wife Abigail and his son Jack in a seemingly gloomy and stormy evening. Uncle hasn't returned home yet, prompting John to worry about him and where he is, but Abigail reassures him, saying he's probably in a bar somewhere warm and safe. Eventually, John and Abigail are awoken by a zombified uncle who infects both Abigail and Jack causing John to hogtie the both of them in hopes of finding a cure to their sickness. This story is very simple, but does a great job of setting the tone for the whole campaign. The campaign has us going through a lot of major areas in the original story, where we see familiar faces like Professor McDougal, Nigel West Dickens, Seth, and Abraham Reyes. Through doing multiple quests and aiding survivors in New Austin, West Elizabeth, and Nuevo Paricio, John deduces the cause of the infection to be caused by Abraham Reyes, who stole a mask from an ancient goddess, angering her and causing her to release this plague. After returning the mask to the tomb it was stolen from, everything seemingly returns to how it was, and John can finally return home to his uninfected family. I mean, what can I say? Rockstar really knows how to make an engaging campaign for story modes. Seeing how these characters and John interact with the zombies is so entertaining. Especially John, he has some of the funniest interactions in this mode. Any of you sick, crazy bastards or what I've done to you, but I'm going to get help. Stay calm. As calm as you can, seeing as both of you seem to have gotten a little excited. Probably just a fever. Jack, be kind to your mother. Abigail. Teach the boy right from wrong. Both of you, stop biting chunks out of people. I'll be back as soon as I can. Hello, boys. Marshall sent me and need some help. I guess you got other plans. Seriously, enjoy your meal, no problem. This is calm. What's a little like cannibalism among friends? Excuse me. So. How have you been? Good. Well, apart from my wife and son being tied up and trying to rip my soul clean out of my body, <laughs> and the entire earth turning into hell. Good. Real good. And this game does a great job at humbling the homophobic racist motherfuckers in this campaign. Why? This whole thing is nothing but a Jewish plot. You do know that, don't you? <laughs> I find that highly unlikely, amigo. Well, I don't like Jews. Or colored folk. Or natives, now that you mention it. A majority of the game is these fun little cutscenes, but that never bothered me since all of them are so well done, so entertaining, that I could watch them ten times over and suddenly not be tired of them. You can tell how much fun they had making all these cutscenes and how much love went into each of them. They don't take themselves too seriously, which I love. And it's just so fun and enjoyable to the point where you can just watch the cutscenes and you can understand what's going on and be extremely entertained. I think that the story and the cutscenes are by far the strongest points of this DLC and is a majority of the reason why this DLC is so loved. The 
gameplay of Undead Nightmare can really be boiled down to these two words. Kill zombies. That's it. That's really the majority of what you're doing here. And to me, it's really fun. The zombies are chaotic and pose a huge threat, especially when they are in huge hordes, which is most of the time. As for the missions, just refer to the two words I said at the beginning of this section for a basic idea of what you'll be doing. But to go in more depth, there's three main mission types that are used throughout the main story. We got zombie clearing, where you kill a certain amount of zombies to regress. Town clearing, where you kill zombies to aid survivors in the town and make it a safe area for you. And graveyard clearing, where you get this, kill zombies and also burn down coffins to clear out the graveyards. Of course, there are more side missions and such, which I'll cover in a second, but that's the basic format of the missions in the main story. It's very simplistic, and if you were playing this for a while at a time, can get very stale. But in my eyes, the story and cutscenes more than make up for this repetitive gameplay style, because like, when I'm doing these missions, I'm excited to see the cutscene at the end. But if you just want to aim a double barrel shotgun down a zombie's throat for a couple of hours, then this is the perfect DLC for you. For this just being a DLC, I am honestly surprised how much side content there, there is. There's new side missions, challenges, outfits, and side features exclusive to this DLC, like town clearing and cemetery clearing that I brought up earlier. This 100% isn't nearly as long as the base game, but still has a sizable amount of things to do, like 6 optional missions, 5 cemeteries to clear, 16 missing people to find, 20 towns to save, and 4 new challenges to complete. The side missions gameplays are mostly fetch quests and zombie killing, but of course the cutscenes are amazing and make them more than worthwhile to do. One though that really stood out to me though is called Birth of the Conservation Movement which requires you to hunt and kill six Sasquatches? What? This pushes the harmless species to extinction, sadly, due to the people thinking they are baby eaters. There's no way this is true. You eat babies. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? I stand corrected. But the, honestly, the mission is so unique in the sense that in a world plagued by zombies and a viral infection, you decide that the best thing to do with your time is to hunt down a bunch of mythical creatures that pose no threat to you or anyone while flesh-eating zombies ravage the human race. I honestly really love how unserious this DLC gets at times, it makes it so entertaining. But yeah, even aside from the story, there are tons of side quests to be done, making the replayability of the game really high and gives you something to do even after you finish the main game, which is awesome. What's a good zombie DLC without good zombies? It really makes or breaks these types of games, like just look at Left 4 Dead. Without its iconic zombies, the game would not be as special as it is. So how good are the zombies in Undead Nightmare? Aesthetically, the zombies look amazing. There was clear attention to detail brought to every zombie in the game to give them that green disheveled look to them. They look so unsettling and creepy, and the sounds that they make are just fantastic. But what do they actually do? Within the DLC, there are four different types of zombies. We got the fresh and dead, which are your basic zombies that you see everywhere. They don't do much. They do have a special ability to grapple you, which is a, like a grab attack that stuns you briefly. And if you're a low enough health, it will instantly kill you. Bolters are like the fast zombies. They are seen on all fours and they like claw and bite at your legs and also have a chance to grapple you. Bruisers are your tanks, fat and slow moving zombies that if they get too close, they will knock you down, stunning you for a much longer time than a grapple and like typically a horde of zombies will come and attack you right after. And finally, you got the retchers, which glow green and hurl toxic spit at you, dealing damage to you at range. All these zombies look amazing, but I can't deny that the way that they attack John is very basic. But I can't really fault them with that since they are a huge threat throughout the playthrough and just the presence of a huge horde of zombies will cause you to run and try to put yourself in an advantageous position to pick off the horde. 
It's not really tough though. They are zombies and you won't die to them too often if you play it right since they are easy to avoid and Deadeye makes them trivial. But in the end, difficulty is not what I care about when it comes to the zombies. And I have to say, these zombies are amazing. Their creepy looks and unsettling presence makes them the perfect antagonist for the campaign. <laughs> Boy, I gotta get my throat checked up after this. So that was Undead Nightmare, a masterpiece nonetheless, and a DLC I really enjoyed playing. It was short in comparison to the story mode, but honestly, it didn't need to be any longer than it already was. The game had a great story, fun gameplay, a sizable amount of side content, and amazing zombies. I really had a lot of fun with this DLC and can't wait for the dead to rise again in the Red Dead universe. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much and please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more Red Dead content. And have a happy and spooky Halloween.